guys and gals well time for another mixed bags video so we're going to start off with uh doing a rehouse uh this is uh theraphosa apophysis pigfoot goliath uh my female she's uh probably a good six inches um <clears throat> she's okay in this smaller enclosure uh but uh she's growing and she's probably within her next molt or so she's going to need to upgrade and she's quite skittish, so I wanted to get her into something a little bit bigger like this. So, anyway, so I have my handy dandy paintbrush, catch cup, and uh, I have this little piece of cardboard I'm going to use uh, when I cup her. I'm just going to cover it like that so she can't get out. Uh, she is quite a kicker. Um, hopefully, she doesn't kick too much. Uh, I don't feel like being too itchy tomorrow. But, anyways, we'll start off with that, guys. So I'm not going to talk because I want to concentrate. She just got defensive, which is not too bad. It's better than kicking. So what I'm doing is just coaxing her off the ground or her substrate. And I'm just going to lift her over here. And hopefully she walks down. that I'll adjust the camera a little bit for you guys hopefully she just comes out instead of going up I really need to put a hole in uh, my cup so I can tickle her out then I'll maybe just turn them a little bit and give them a little bit of a vibration they'll come out there she is. I'm just going to pause you guys and I'll give you a better look at her. Alright, there's a better look at her guys. That went uh, quite well. She didn't kick at all. That was my worst fear because uh, for one, I don't like her abdomen being bald. She looks like it's darkening up a little bit and uh, I don't want to be itchy. <clears throat> so as you can see, this is one of the largest bins that I use and this is the second largest. And then it goes down from there so um, she will need rehoused out of this again at some point I did pick up some uh, quite large bins but sorry it's not focusing I picked up some large bins but uh, that's not for her just yet so anyways just got ventilation everywhere same deal as all my other enclosures sides top here's the lid here it's all vented out on the top around the edges because if something sits on top of this uh, it's going to cut off the airflow so I've got a mix of cocoa fiber and uh, black earth in here water dish piece of wood or bark I've got this nice little leaf over in this corner here uh, it's gonna be her damp side um, it's just some moss and that's about it so she can get under that leaf there as you guys can see you can hang it under there uh, or uh, I'm not sure if we can see from this side I don't want to get too close to her but she can get under that wood as well uh, I had a hide over here for her never ever seen her in it so uh, you know these guys tend to be out in the open quite a bit especially as they get uh, larger they don't really fear a whole lot anyways guys there's a good look at her in all her glory um, as most of you know there's uh, three uh, theraphosis in this genus there's uh, apophysis stermy and uh, T. blondi uh, which is Theraphosa blondi. I have the Apophysis and the Stermy yet to have a, or get a, a T. blondi. Uh, that would be nice. One day I will, but they're very, very pricey. I think for a one inch sling here, they're uh, $350. So that's a big chunk of change. Anyways, guys, we'll let her settle in there and uh, we'll move on to the next. All right, guys, I just figured uh, before I put the Theraphosa Apophysis up, I'd give you guys a look at my uh, Theraphosa Stermy. This is Sarge. Uh, he's a male. Uh, he's probably about five and a half, six inches as well, uh, growing very well. They both are. Um, he's a little bit damp over here, but uh, I got to give him a spray down. I didn't want to spray him because he might have uh, retreated into uh, his hide there and we wouldn't be able to see him. So anyways, actually what I can do guys, uh, he's hanging out there like he wants something to eat. So I'm going to pause you guys. I'll grab a roach and we'll see if we can get him to take down a roach. One second. 
He has backed up a little bit, but I'm going to try uh coax him out with this roach. Last time I did this, he attacked my tongs. He didn't come all the way out, which is fine. There he goes. Very skittish. That's okay. It changes from molt to molt. Some last time uh, before he molted, he was never in his hide. Uh, and then he molted, and anytime I see him, he's just poking out of his hide or right in his hide. But that's okay. As long as he's healthy. All right, guys. On to the next. All right. This is my uh, green bottle blue number two. Uh, this one has been kind of picky on the when it comes to feeding for me when I initially got her she would only eat uh, crickets then I got her on to super worms and then I got her on to uh, roaches but she wouldn't take any worms nor would she take any uh, roaches now her abdomen's looking fine uh, I don't really see it darkening up much but um, I'm gonna just try around a few crickets and see what happens. Oh, there you go. Oh, she just attacked it. I was angry. She attacked it, bit it, and I thought she was gonna eat it, but she spat it out. Well, you know, she could be in the early stages of pre-molt, but I, I, I don't think so. I think uh, I don't think she would have uh, attacked like that. Um, I think uh, she's just angry. <laughs> but she's laid quite a bit more web, as you can see there. She's webbing up a lot more. Is that other cricket that was underneath there? Anyways, I'm gonna leave these in. Uh, I'm in down in my room here, so I'm in here for another couple hours. So. I'll just leave them in there and I will check on her before uh, I go to bed and uh, I'll take them out if uh, she hasn't eaten any of them. On to the next guys. Okay guys, this is uh, from Big Tabisco Saturday's Haitian Brown Bird Eater number one. Uh, here she is down in there. Uh, it had blocked itself up, but as I came in tonight, uh, to the right of its burrow was its molt. So I just pulled it away from there. I'm going to get it out of there. Uh, so actually I've had several teas molt so I'll uh, give you an update on all of them and uh, you can't really see her him or her but I decided to just give you a shot of her anyways anyways guys on to the next actually I'll just go from here um, it's gonna be hard to see because of the glare that's my P Metallica uh, it molted it's uh, I think it was molted last week it's eating a cricket and now it's mounting on a roach uh, my two little um, Nandu chromatuses have both molted. You can actually see them now, which is kind of nice. The other one's in there somewhere. There he is there. I'll bring them down and give you a better look. Uh, Oclotheria ornata. One or two. One of them had molted uh, since my last feeding video. Also, Oclotheria miranda had finally molted. Uh, oh, I do have some bad news. Um, I did lose a T, my uh, Pocletheria uh, rufolata. Uh, I don't know what happened with it, guys. It wasn't really eating for me uh, since I got it. I got it just over a month ago. Um, I tried it. I, I got one cricket into it. I tried it on uh, mealworms. It was only a, like a one and one and a half inch sling. Um, but uh, it, it didn't want to eat um, and it was really weird because you know I check on my teeth quite often and I offered it uh, different prey items like I said about three weeks ago I did get one cricket into it uh, then I tried it uh, a mealworm nothing roach nothing and I tried a cricket again nothing and um, then I checked on it I guess it was about a week ago and I opened the lid up you know to spray it down and whatnot and it popped out of uh, the enclosure that's a little uh, pill vial and uh, you know scampered around the enclosure a little bit I got a little brush and I coaxed it back in and the next day I came down um, and it was in death curl it was it was actually dead so 
Um, not not that I'm surprised. I I was a little worried about it because it just wasn't eating, like you know, and uh, it was it didn't want to feed for me. So unfortunately, um, these things happen, and that's why sometimes it's better to get uh, tarantulas that are a little bit larger because things can be very fragile. So um, I will get another one, but uh, it's kind of a bummer because uh, that's my first pokey I've ever lost. I don't lose many teas. Um, but, uh, it was my first pokey that I've lost and I think I have one, two, three, four, five. I think that was my sixth pokey. It was actually my last one I got. And unfortunately, uh, it just didn't do well. So anyways, also Avicularia versus Collar, he, he or she's right there. He's going to need a rehouse. All these guys are going to need rehoused. Um, so I got lots of work to do there, but, uh, he's doing great. He or she molted as well. Uh, who else molted? Who else has molted? I think that's it. As far as the smaller tees. Um, but up here, I don't know if you guys can see that. Sorry about the glare. I put a shelf up. And uh, I got all my little uh, food containers, whatever you want to call them, up here. My uh, Samopoas poultures are up here. My Samopoas Armenia. My Samopoas Cambridge Eyes. Another Cambridge Eye. This is my uh, HMAC, and this is where I'm going to put my pokies in. I got them. I still have to set them up, so I'm going to put my uh, my pokey, Pocothera anatas, my P metallica, and I don't know what else in there, but uh, that's what they're for, anyways. All right, guys. So uh, I guess I shouldn't leave this lid off for too long. My knee's not coming out. Anyways, guys, we'll go and see uh, what else we have. Hey guys, here's a look at Binks, my uh, red iguana. As you can see, he's fat and plump. Dewlap's always out when I'm in the room. Uh, and uh, he's, he's doing great. I mean, he's healthy, but uh, he's very, very skittish. Um, doesn't bite, but uh, does a lot of tail whipping. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. Yeah, see, as soon as I get too close, he flares up. But anyways, I just give you a look at him. His enclosure eats like a pig. I've said it before, but he does that almost in, say, a day, day and a half. If I don't get it right the next morning, uh, uh, it's gone by the time I get home. So look at him. Beautiful iguana, though. I'm suspecting male just by the size of the spikes. You've seen he just sneezed there. He's not sick. Let me see if I can get no glare. He's not sick. What happens is uh, the vitamins we put on their food, the calcium and the multivitamins, uh, anything uh, that they don't need, they'll actually um, sneeze it out their nose. So I've wiped this, sprayed this down, but a lot of enclosures you'll see, that's watermarks, but you'll see like little stains on the glass. That's actually uh, leftover vitamins and whatnot, but they don't absorb. Uh, I guess the marine iguanas, because uh, they eat so much uh, seaweed and whatnot, a lot of salt, they'll, uh, you'll see them on the shore as well, on TV, because they're not around us in their illegal dome, but you'll see them sit there and they just spit out their nose, though pretty much all day long but yeah that's what they do so don't think he's got a cold or anything he's great temperature's good he's got his UVB UVA so anyways guys that's a look at Banks I didn't want to open the door because uh he don't like me so much so I don't want to freak him out and he's uh basking there on his wood nice and comfortable anyways guys on to the next alrighty there's a look at Nandu Chromatis number one little swing and there's number two. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yep, doing well. There's his little molt hanging out beside him. That's how much he's grown. Uh, before he molted, I could hardly even see it. But uh, got some size, a little bit of size to it now. And uh, you can see they both have fed since they're molts. Their uh, abdomens are nice, looking nice and plump. That's just a dead roach that I pre killed roach I put in there for him. And there's the other one as well. I think these guys are going to need a little bit of a rehouse. It's looking a little funky in there. Anyways, guys, let's look at that. And right here, that is my last uh, assassin bug nymph. As you can see, there's its molt. So now all four, zoom out a little bit, all four of my assassin bugs have matured. So I'm going to reset up something. Uh, probably this is a little breeder bin 
small, I have a large that I'm not using, I'm going to set that up and put all four of them together. But before I do that, I'm going to feed them up well. I'm sure they'll be okay, but you know, these guys can be a little crazy. And uh, become cannibals, so we got to make sure they're all fed well. It looks like they're fed well because they're not wanting to eat. Try this guy over here. And the crickets went the other way. Great. Just great. Let's see if I can catch one of these crickets in here. Maybe he'll attack it. He molted uh, a couple days ago. I mean, he looks hard, but he might need a little more time, so. But I'm sure those uh, crickets won't harm him. And I'll check on them a little bit later. But they're absolutely beautiful. Try to get it to zoom a little bit. As you can see on top of their heads, they have, I don't know if that's their eyes, but the little red dots. They have them underneath as well. And... I never noticed, but before they have, maybe I'll see on these guys better. They have uh, little spikes on their carapace, or I guess it's their body other than the carapace. Pretty cool, right under the wings. Very neat. So when I rehouse them, I'm going to take all this substrate uh, in this enclosure, and I'm going to put it in the new enclosure because uh, there could be. There could be eggs in there uh, because they are mature now and they, the eggs are so so tiny um, I'm not getting any younger my eyes are pretty bad <laughs> so I'm just gonna transfer this substrate pick through all the you know the bad debris per se oh he just tried to get something there and uh, put it in the enclosure that way if there are any eggs in there um, hopefully it'll hatch out or if I see them I'll pull them out one or the other so anyways guys on to the next Hey guys, this is just a quick look at Jabba, uh, our pixie frog, African bullfrog, bullfrog. Look how big he's getting. Like, oh, going for a jump. Like, he's taking up half my hand now, and when I got him, he was probably the size of his head. That's just over a month ago, so. He's doing great, nice and fat, eats lots of roaches. Uh, I feed him every other day. And I give him, uh, he eats about 10, 10, 11, you know, roaches that are about the size of his head, per se, right, you know, top of his head there. So, uh, he's doing great. Anyways, guys, on to the next. All right, here's a look at my uh, Pac-Man frog. Um, this one's doing really well, as well. Uh, the only thing is, he doesn't like uh, roaches, so he grabs them and then spits them out. So uh, what we started doing is giving him some fish um, and also some shrimp that we uh, loaded up with uh, calcium and also multivitamins. So I got a piece of shrimp here. We're going to see if he's going to eat it. Oh no, laziness. Okay, he's got it. Lazy frog, but he's absolutely gorgeous. He or she, hopefully, this one is uh, a female because the females I like big things. The females uh, do get bigger in the Pac Man frog, but uh, the, the African bullfrogs or the pixie frogs, the males get bigger. So, I'm hoping uh, Jabba is a uh, male, and I'm hoping this one's a female, and I'll probably end up picking up a couple more of each um, at some point because uh, maybe I'll try breeding them down the road and you know it's nice to have a variety so I like to have a variety anyways yeah we're not gonna leave it on them too long guys because it you know these guys that's a fairly large uh, piece of shrimp so he'll eat it swallow it chomp it down swallow it again and uh, he'll actually uh, I think two days ago he ate three of these this size. So he's a pig, but that's okay. That means he's going to grow quicker. And like I said, I do put the multivitamins uh, and calcium on there because they need that as well. Uh, so 
Anyways, guys, on to the next. All right, guys, this is uh, my veiled chameleon, my male veil. We named him Chico. Uh, he's already eaten, but I'm going to try and see if he wants to eat some more. There he goes. Yep, yeah, he's big. Uh, I don't have any vitamins on this because he already ate, uh, I believe it was four or five roaches earlier, and they all had their vitamins on there. So... Very happy with this guy. His colors look the best when he's sleeping, believe it or not, because he's relaxed. Another one. Sometimes it takes him a few minutes in between. Say hi to the people. See their eyes move independently. One's looking up, one's looking down. As you all, or most you know, these guys are not fast at all. They're, they depend on camouflage uh, to stay away from predators. That's why he can look every which way at different times. Another one, buddy? What I do, I hand feed him every night. Um, I do have a couple roaches down there in his bin, but roaches, they just sit still. They don't move. And, uh, you know, they don't like to be on the ground too often. The chameleon's meaning. So I just do this in a dish. Shake and bake a few uh, roaches. Uh, he'll do it, depending on the sizes. I mean, these are a good size, but I've seen him take down uh, three male mature male dubias in one night so and then actually between three and five actually the big roaches he takes three if they're medium size he'll take up to five which is that's a good meal for him and I rearranged his water situation as you can see I got it dripping from up here I set up the, the big dripper it's called uh, and I hooked up airline uh, silicone airline tubing to it and it just drips through there I uh, hot glue gun that on there and it drips into there and it always you can see it moving and that's what attracts them is the, the rippling water and also when it gets full it will there's holes on the side here it drips out and drips down throughout into this enclosure here I'm not enclosure bin and as you see I have sticks down there just in case I don't let it get deep I dump it you know every day every other day and uh, if he was to get in there, uh, he can climb out through the sticks. So, want anything? Come on, buddy. He's looking. He'll want them again in another half hour or so. He's like, where'd they go? Where'd they go? Oh, very cool. Very cool is it? I'm very happy with him. And over here, guys, let me just uh, close this up. He's in a Zoomed uh, Repti Breeze Extra Large. So it's uh, two feet wide, two feet deep, and it's four feet high. So that's plenty of room for him. Over here is our little beardy, Gally. He's doing great. He's growing, actually. Uh, he's still got his, you know, disability, the metabolic bone disease. But uh, I got brand new lights underneath him. So hopefully, uh, you know. He gets better in time anyways. It'll take some time to correct. So anyways, guys, I believe, uh, like I said, I can go on forever because, you know, I have a lot of stuff here. But uh, I believe that's going to be it for the video. Uh, you know, uh, I'll be doing another feeding video in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going to feed some slings. So I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, record that or not. But uh, I got some bins down there. They're huge. I got two more over there. I'm thinking of putting my uh, uh, Pecan Sarities in there, my large ones. And I'm thinking about rehousing this girl in here. She's still under here. She hasn't eaten for me uh, in probably a month and a half. The last feeding video, she didn't want to eat either. So uh, 
I, I, she's fine. Uh, she could be coming up into a pre-molt, but last time it was a year in between her molt, and she molted this July, and she molted the July before, so I can't see her uh, going into pre-molt this soon uh, at her size. It's usually around once a year. But uh, I'll keep an eye on her. If not, I'm going to put her in something a little bit smaller, probably one of these bins down here, something like that. I don't know the sizes of them. Does it say? Uh, 48 quart. Uh, there's the dimensions there. 22 high, 15 by 13 and a quarter. So it's a good size. Very deep, you know, so I can fill it up with substrate and I can do it up a little bit for her. But they need to be set up, meaning vented out and all that. So, anyways, guys, that's it. Uh, well, I'll show you this. I don't know if you guys seen this. I've moved most of my tees over here on this big wall here with all my tees. My larger one. Some of my slings over here. I do still have some of my slings up here. And my uh, each poker piece are up there with, uh, what's that up there? That's my little uh, NNC. As I said before, these are for my pokies. I'm going to reset them up, rehouse them. And as I said, I put that shelf up. So, anyways, guys, that's it for now. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope that you guys uh, have a great day and a great night wherever you're at. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.